Welcome back to another video. We're gonna take a look at 3D curve. So this is a follow-up for the Shape Sculptor Workbench in Katia V5. Within my previous videos, I discuss everything regarding component selection. Now let's take a look at how we can use 3D curve. So I already prepared a scene over here. As you can see, we have true points, control points, near points, and we can also impose tangency. So to make this easier to follow, I'm going to start from scratch. So I will go to new, I will create a new part. Over here, since I have the axis enabled, I will show also the planes because they will be hidden by default. And let me just jump within part design and I will create a simple rectangle over here which I will extrude in order to use this as a reference for the 3D mesh creation. And I will also jump within Imagine and Shape. And over here, I will define some uh, primitives. So I will create one model over there, and I will also add a pyramid as well. Now, since I didn't have anything selected, this was positioned within the middle, and I will just move it on the y-axis over there. Now, I will jump back to Shape Sculptor. Keep in mind that the 3D curve is available within various workbenches. So this is not the only workbench. This is also available, for example, within Freestyle Workbench. We're also going to have the 3D curve over here. And the functionality will be exactly the same no matter the workbench. I will just go back to Shape Sculptor because this is the workbench that um, I will focus within this series. So with the 3D curve enabled, we're going to see that we have three creation types. So we have two points, control points and near point. For the first one, I will go and use true points. As we can see, we can start the points either within, uh, let's say, the blank 3D space. For example, if I'm going, just going to click over here, that will create a point over there. If I will move my mouse cursor onto the surface of an object, even though this was created using Imagine and Shape and is a subdivision, so this is just a surface, it doesn't have any material on the inside, I can still position various points on those um, surfaces. And you see how I move the mouse, various surfaces will be selected and I will be able to have all those points snapped to that surface. It will be the same over here with um, the pyramid. If I want to pinpoint the points within specific vertex, I can do that. As you can see, this will be the top vertex of the pyramid. Afterwards, maybe I will go with the mesh over here and I will jump within the vertex over here on the bottom of the pyramid. And the same uh, will be for parts that were created using part design. So they will have that, um, let's say, edge vertex, as we can see. Since I click that and it snapped over there, we're going to see how we can reposition that afterwards and at the end we can just click ok but keep in mind that this will also close the 3d curve let me just rename this and this was the two points creation method if you want to go back and edit you can double click over here and this will reactivate the 3d curve and as you can see now we have the possibility to either insert a point using Control a with insert point you're gonna see how the spline will be in green and depending on the location where you want to insert the point you can just do a simple click and afterwards you have the possibility to reposition that we can also remove points so with a remove point we can remove a specific point over there we also have the possibility to free or constrain a point. For example, if I will go over here, we're going to see even though it was snapped on that vertex, we know that that is perfectly positioned over there. We can also um, move it. So if I'm just going to click on this in order to constrain it, 
afterwards we can see that i can snap the point so this will be snapped over here and if you hold down control this will be projected so maybe that point is not the most relevant in this case i will just snap the point over there and let me show you how we can um, create different points so i will just select this point as you can see this is not constrained when it was created it was snapped uh, over here and this was constrained and i have the possibility to free that by clicking on it and afterwards i have the possibility to to move that if i'm gonna move like this again i can move it and afterwards if i will click on free on constraint if i will hold down con first i need to select the point so i will click to activate it and now you're going to see how this will be snapped to that face but if i'm going to hold down control this will be projected using the minimum distance to that surface so yeah, i will just click that we're going to see how that that point will uh, will be snapped so in this case it's snapped all the way on the other side this is why it's usually a good idea to just have the points and uh, move them so if you're just gonna double click you can select the points and you can move them within the 3d space as you want so that they will pass to the points that will be useful for the case study this was a true points option I will now um, hide this and I will create a new 3D curve and we're going to go and make use of the control points. We see that for true points, control points, we don't have this deviation enabled. It will only be enabled for the near points option over here. So the difference between control points and um, true points is that you will define some points and um, let's say the spline will be controlled by those lines so for example if i'm just gonna position some points over here some on the surface of that if i will click ok this i will have it rename to control points if i will double click on this we're gonna see how we have those control points so we have the spline over here colored in white and we have the red points that we can move in order to change that curvature. If I'm going to click over here, we can see that we can edit the point. In this case, we're going to have the relative position of that. If I want to go on the Z axis, I can just increase that and that will take the point um, upwards. And we can also increase the, the step over here, but I will just... Um, close that for now so the main difference is that within control points you don't exactly position the points um, to that surface you will position these red lines and afterwards you have the possibility to change those and the last option will be near points so for the near points we can specify also over here we're going to have the deviation and we're also going to have the possibility to do some changes to the segmentation and max order for example by default with these settings if i will start and use the near points we're going to see how we can position various points we're going to have a numbering start over there incremental so we see currently set to automatic we have the numbering set to two and each point will increase that um, that number so we are currently all the way up to up to six but as you can see i can still position various points so how how we can uh, let's say change this we have the possibility to right click on that auto number so we have this we can specify the number of segments so over here we currently have one two so uh, it's currently set to 17 and we have uh, 14 segments over here we can also have that change as you're gonna see that will draw a different curve 
So even though I position all those points, if this will be set to 4, this will estimate the curve that will uh, go only through 4 points. I will go to 16, we're going to see how that will change. So the functionality for near points in most cases is not that, uh, that needed. The best solution is just go through points where, uh, where you want to position those. That will be the, um, let's say, the, the best solution. And we can also insert a point in tangency. For example, if I will click on that point, we have the possibility over here to, to relocate that point. But if I will re-enable that and go to in, insert a point in tangency, you're going to see how that point will be added. So even though I'm positioning over here, the point will be position in tangency. We can also impose the tangency by right clicking and go to impose tangency. And over here, we're going to have the possibility to, to change that. So let me just select a different point over here. So I'm just going to click on insert point. I will position a point somewhere over here. And we have that tangency. We can change it on this axis, for example, or we can change it on the other axis. And afterwards, we're going to see that if I will try to also constrain this point, for example, to be over there. Now we have the insert a point in tangency enabled. So we see that we are um, inputted to click anywhere to create your construction points. So I will click my construction point over there. So we're going to see that tangency defined um, by those two. And afterwards we can impose the tangency. That means that if I will move this, we're going to see how that tangency will also be added. So we have the possibility to move the position of the point over here, but we have that tangency arrow over here. And this is currently set to 1.0. We can also change the orientation of that. And afterwards, we see that we can have that rotated and we can spin the position. So we can use a 3D curve. The most, let's say, widely used is the possibility to go through points since you can directly position the points where you want to. And you're going to see that spline created within those, those locations. OK, so this was the section regarding the creation of the 3D curve. Within the following video, I will discuss the paint curve. So if you enjoyed this video, I will position a similar video over here to the left. I will add this to the Katia V5 tips and tricks. And I will also add the subscribe button over here on the right. So that's it. Thanks for watching.